Welcome, guys. So glad you could join us today as we dive into the world of the Rapid City Marshals. Hosted by myself, C. Green, Marshals Law on Shady Sports Network brings you exclusive interviews, game analysis, and behind-the-scenes stories of these remarkable athletes and coaches. Get ready to witness the power, passion, and determination of the Rapid City Marshals as they rewrite the rule book and enforce their own brand of justice on the field. This is Marshals Law on Shady Sports Network. Let's bring the law to the game. This show is sponsored by WeatherTight. Stay protected, rain or shine. Yeah, thanks for following us in the show, Marshalls Law. You can follow the Rapid City Marshalls at marshallsfootball.com. That's www.marshallsfootball.com. M-A-R-S-H-A-L-S-1-L, marshallsfootball.com. And if you want to unlock the ultimate sports experience, head on over to shadysportsnetwork.com, your gateway to endless excitement and exclusive content. Follow, like, and subscribe for updates. All right, guys, so on today's show, we'll be joined by defensive coordinator of the Rapid City Marshals, Coach Edwards, Coach Montre Edwards. Coach Edwards is the Jackson native. Um, he was an associate head coach and defensive line coach at Holmes Community College. He coached at – this guy's coached everywhere over Jackson. He's a Jackson legend, basically. Um, he was at Holmes County Central, Murray High School, Junior High, Canton High. Um, also, I see here it says you're a co-founder of Jackson Giants Sports Club. Yes, sir. And I don't know. If, I don't know if you want to touch on that, but that sounds kind of interesting. I'd like to talk about it. Go ahead. The go Jackson ahead. Giants Sports Club. That's that's my baby. Uh, okay. That was that was something that I incorporated here in Jackson, Mississippi, for inner inner city youth. Uh, because I don't know if you know, Jackson, Mississippi is a high crime ridden area. Uh, issues with water issues. So I started this organization in about 2003. Uh, okay. It's a youth football organization, uh, cheerleading. Uh, we taught uh, uh, sex can wait program for teens, uh, esteem program for young ladies. It consisted of both uh, male and females. But our target area was football and cheerleading, what I was familiar with. Uh, so many kids have come up out of my program, have went on to play uh, SEC football. As a matter of fact, uh, what we have in Mississippi is called the Mississippi Dandy Does. That's like the top 12 football players in the state of Mississippi. Uh, okay. In the last three years, uh, I've had two of my kids that have played, that specifically come from the Jackson Giants Sports Club from when they were five years old to excel and both uh ended up signing power five scholarship uh one was my son montreal was junior uh he was a dandy dozen i coached him at holmes county central uh the other one was kamari rogers another kid that i coached from age five that went all the way up through my program i also coached him at holmes county central uh kamari is currently uh playing at mississippi state university he signed with miami was a was a dandy dozen uh my son montreal uh, was a dandy dozen. He signed with the University of Missouri out of high school. He's currently uh, playing at FAMU. So it's, nice. it's, it's the youth organization. I could go on and on and on and name countless amount of kids that have come through that organization. Uh, we took them on trips. They went. They played in tournaments all over the United States, the South. It is. It's like I said. It's my. That was my baby, and it still is. I've converted it now <clears throat> to Jackson Town Sports Club. So now it's just mostly training. It's sports. It's my sports performance training. I kind of got away once my son went to high school. I ended up coaching him. So I got away from the Jackson Giants Sports Club. But since every, the the smoke has settled, I'm back doing it now. And it's called the uh, Jackson Giants. Uh, not. No, I'm sorry. 
Edwards Sports Performance. So we okay. can, yeah. And how can uh, you know, just to, real quick, how can people get a, a hold of you for that? Maybe. Oh, it's, it's it, it, you guys. It, everything is still under my same email. It was Montreal Yahoo. Uh, my same phone number, 601-953-9324. I had the same phone number for 25 years. So it's uh, not real hard to get a hold of us. Not real hard to get a hold. Definitely, man. That's cool. I always like to try to to ask the people I'm talking to, you know, what they're they're doing to give back to the city. So, I mean, mm -hmm. that jumped out to me, you Absolutely. know, really quick. That's amazing because, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, you know, it's awesome to be able, you know, to be on the professional level. But at the mm -hmm. same time, you know, it starts – with the youth, with, with the, the youth. kids, with the, youth, with the kids, correct. Mm -hmm. So I see you, the defensive coordinator. It looks like you you came up playing a little bit of defensive line, also offensive line, right? Yes, sir. I I, I was a cellular defensive lineman in high school. Uh, I went to a junior college called Hines Community College, where I played with guys who played probably about twenty five years uh, in the NFL on the defensive line. Mm -hmm. uh, my coaches came and they said, well, we want to put our best 22 guys on the field at one time. So I made a transition to play offense once I got to junior college. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with guys like Grady Jackson. He played uh, maybe 13, 14, 15 years. He was uh, drafted by the Raiders. Uh, okay. Mark, Smith, Mark Smith was one of my best friends, uh, drafted to the Cardinals. Uh, Michael Myers went to the University of Alabama play with the Cowboys. So those guys were, were defensive linemen and, you know, playing time was a little push coming shell. So I ended up uh, translating it to playing offensive line where I was a junior college All-American and I also uh, was a black college All-American at Jackson State University. Okay, okay. Speaking of Jackson State, man, I mean, they've been getting a lot of love lately. It's cool to see. It's cool Absolutely. to see a spotlight being shined. Um, so, I mean, man, you got a host of experience. You got a, a lot of experience and, and, you know, some great connections, um, which I think is going to be super helpful for the Marshals. Um, transferring over to the Marshals, I mean, with, with all that, with all that history, with all that, that knowledge, you know, um, what's your coaching philosophy? And then how does that reflect into your approach to training and developing? Uh, basics. Master the basics. You know, that, that's, that's pretty much – Football is block, run, tackle, fundamentals, fundamentals at every level. When all else fails, uh, rely back to your fundamentals. Uh, attitude is everything. Attitude translates. If I'm teaching kids, you, it's all about your attitude. Your attitude translates from the field to the classroom to home with mom when she says, hey, take the garbage out. So it's all about attitude. You know, attitude and gratitude is, are, are my two biggest pet peeves. And uh, we're going to be fundamentally sound. We're going to master the basics. That's that's what kind of coach I am. Let's master the small stuff. Uh, it's kind of like uh, you can cut the grass, the, the, the grass outside, but if you don't edge it and weed it, it, it defeats the whole purpose. So it's, I, I'm real big on the small things. That makes me Man, that's. Uh, you're right there. That's funny. That's, you know, pretty much the same thing Coach X said last week. So it's, it's cool to see that, you know, continue across the board. Um, so um, speaking of that, you said, you know, the little things. I know um, in arena, you guys are playing both sides of the of the field, Correct. right? Correct. So with, Correct. with you being on, on the defensive side, um, how do you how do you make, you know, end game adjustments? You know, how are you going to go about that and handle? Um, kind of some situations that may arise with, you know. Well, my, my thing with that, uh, Mr. Green, is prior preparation prevents poor performance. So <laughs> we, we have been a win over every aspect of a game during practice. So when the game comes, the games will be simplified and they'll be easy. So uh, we'll put them in every extreme situation that this possibly could be. Uh, two minutes of this half, two minutes at the beginning of that half. Uh, you know, as well as you know, uh, the AFL has a trans uh, a substitution rule that uh, a lot of people don't not very familiar with. But you know, like I said, uh, I've coached on this level for several years and excelled on it for several years. So I think that gives us the pretty much a cheat code with what we got, what we have going. As far as my experience, Coach King's experience, uh, my experience of working with Coach King and for Coach King before. Uh, we were together in Quad City. 
Uh, mm-hmm. We had a re- we had one of the top five offenses in the in the in the league. Uh, we were top five, and everywhere I've been, we've been as an O line D line coach. We've been top five, uh, not allowing sacks. Top five sacking the quarterback. So I think those are the two key components when you start talking about arena football. Is can I protect my quarterback? Can I get out to their quarterback? And I think we'll be uh, we'll be definitely ready in both aspects of the game as far as that. Okay, okay. Speaking of that, um, because I know a couple of teams switched around. Um, what would you say the biggest challenge in switching from indoor to arena football is? Uh, I would say the substitution pattern. Mm-hmm. I, I think the substitution pattern is going to be uh, well, and then you know the style of play, uh, the the jack rule, the mic, the mic and the jack rules with the mic and the jack, uh, the motions. You know, in some leagues they're allowed two motion to one motion. I think that'll be the but the biggest transition is 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 Iron Man. You know, you know fixing your roster to where you know you are equipped to to go in a game and and have everything you need in every situation covered. Yeah, yeah, especially when it comes to Iron Man football, man. It's mm-hmm. it's one thing, you know, to just go and maybe, I mean, you know, basketball, you play both sides. It's a different story. When you're out there right. as physical as you guys are, right. you know, um, Mike and Jack rule so. um, designates where and how the linebackers can move. Right. Yeah, um, X-Men touched on that last week. So um, how does that work? The Mike, the Mike has, the Mike has a, a grace where he can be, I think it's five and a half, three and a half yards. He can be so much. The jack can go lateral so many yards uh, to the wall where he, uh, if not, it's called illegal defense. And the thing with illegal defense, if you get an illegal defense, it's an automatic first down. So it's almost like a holding in regular football. It's almost a drive killer or a drive keeper. So, So that's more of a mental thing? Would you say? Well, it's more of a discipline thing of doing the right thing, playing by the rules, knowing the rules, and applying the rules, following the rules. Yeah. Speaking of that, you know, um, how do you foster a positive team culture and encourage camaraderie ship amongst the players? Uh, that that all starts at the top. That all starts at the top, and I think the Marshals have done an awesome job of identifying and neglecting an awesome leader and uh, coach coach sets the culture, uh, togetherness, cohesiveness, uh, and the main thing is. Begin with the end in mind, and uh, and everybody working toward one goal. Everybody's philosophy is the same. Everybody's goals are the same. Everybody takes the same route about reaching the goals that they're trying to obtain. So I think that that's what cultivates culture. Yep, yep. Um, that is definitely true, man. I was gonna ask you, you know, so what are your goals and aspirations for the season going into the season with the Marshals? Oh, we're definitely looking at make uh, winning winning season without a doubt. Winning season, uh, we're gonna compete in the playoffs, and uh, I like our chances with our coaching staff, uh, the team coaches assembled. I, I really like our chances as far as 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 taking a. We won't. We definitely won't be the marshals of the past. No, no knock to whatever they've had going on, but we will definitely be a contender. We will mm-hmm. definitely be a contender. I've been feeling the energy, man. Yeah, we'll um, are there are there any teams? Or any teams in the league that you guys are like, all right, we're waiting, we're waiting for this. Uh, I was on Billings' first championship team, mm-hmm. uh, so I'm, I'm looking forward to playing Billings. Uh, of course, like I say, you know, it's always a friendly rival. Uh, I met some great people in Billings. Uh, still friends with a lot of people there. So, uh, but other than that, we just, you know, we 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 have a mission and a goal in mind, and you know, whoever shows up. At our place or their place, you know, we're going in and, and we're going to put our best foot forward. We're going to be prepared. Uh, our guys are going to be in shape, well-conditioned. Uh, we'll be a really good team, I think. We'll be a really yeah. prepared team. There you go. I mean, hey, that's the best way to be, you know what that's I mean? Good. Success is when preparedness, was it? When preparedness meets opportunity, that's success, they say. That's right. Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, so speaking of being prepared, can you talk just a little bit? I guess you've been really hammering on it, but can you talk a little bit more about the importance of player development and how you work with your coaching staff to help players reach their full potentials? Uh, well, you know, the first thing with player with, with, with player development, I mean, it goes back to literally you have to be realistic as far as what are your goals and what are you trying to accomplish. Uh, but uh, player, player development is 
we'll get the most out of our players. Uh, when you start talking about getting the most out of your players, it goes back to preparation. Uh, do I know the game? Uh, am I familiar with the techniques that have been taught? And once all of that comes together, now I can put it together and I can fly around and I can play at, I can play full speed. I understand. It's, it's like it's almost like being a student. I understand this math question. I understand how to get it solved. Now I can go at it full full steam ahead. And you know, usually when people are prepared to do anything, when when anytime you're prepared to do anything, then it becomes fun to you. When you're learning, it becomes fun. You get more hunger. More, for more knowledge of it. So I think that's what we're going to present to the guys, and I think that'll be intricate in our player development with them is that they'll come in and they'll see, hey, coach told me uh, to stick my route. Okay, I stuck my route. I'm wide open. Uh, coach told me to get off the ball, uh, shoot my hand on my stab, snatch, and it worked. So when guys start to, to – to, you start to coach your guys and teach your guys, and they're starting to learn, and then they're starting to see what you're teaching them, comes to pass then that's when you start really getting into player development it becomes fun for everybody yeah so i see man you you coach that i mean quite a few teams on the professional level yes, was there was there like a and i mean in the high school and you know minor level too but was there like a a, a certain coach that really turns you on to coaching and you're like okay that's that's the reason i want to get into coaching or was there what was the reason uh, kind of goes back to I had a I had a middle school junior high coach named Coach Thomas Billups, and when I played for him, I absolutely hated him. I I, I absolutely hated him. I mean, but the more as I got into being a coach, and I see his passion for just kids, this passion for people, and 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 carrying on knowledge to them to help them exceed in life. And, you know, the more I got into it, I said, you know, I want to be like coach. I want to make, you know, I want to come and I want to make a uh, difference in people's lives. And, you know, uh, he was a tough coach. And a lot of times with, with, with anything that's worth having is worth working for. Anything that's easy, that's just handed to you, probably not going to last very long. And it's probably not going to be good for you. But I would say my coach, uh, Coach Billups, Coach Thomas Billups, He's a, like a high school legend, basketball legend here at the school called Lanier High School. Uh, big, big time, big time basketball school. Uh, a lot of greats like Monte Ellis. He was like one of the last guys to go straight from high school to the NBA. He played for Coach Billups. So Coach Billups has definitely been a pioneer and was one of my, uh, was definitely one of my idols that got me into coaching. Nice. Um, well, let me ask you, you got any advice for any aspiring coaches who are looking to maybe make a career into the in professional arena for art? Well, I guess coaching in general. Be, be a lifelong learner. Be, be a lifelong learner. Uh, learn as much as you can. Uh, learn as much as you can, why you can. Uh, just be a lifelong learner. And uh, the next thing I would say is be a lifelong learner. Be passionate about what you're doing. Be, be passionate about what you're doing and just be a lifelong learner. And the main thing that's overlooked in this coaching profession is, is loyalty. Be loyal. If you, you know, cause I mean, loyalty is everything in this business nowadays, you know, mm -hmm. you can always get somebody in and kind of teach them the ropes, but loyalty is very, very important. I will tell you, be loyal to be, be where your feet are. If, if that's where you are at this level, be there, be a hundred, be all in, uh, in order to be a good head coach, you have to be a good assistant at some point. So if you aspire to be a good a head coach, you have to be the assistant coach that you would want to be, you would want as a head coach. So I would say those main two things. But loyalty is, is very, very important. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, Shoot, man. It's been a good talk. Is there anything else you want to maybe touch on? Uh, no, that's 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 about it. I mean, you know, uh, I'm just looking forward to the season, looking forward to getting those big guys up and running because we all know uh, football, it doesn't change. It's all about your bigs, you know, my, my O line and my D line. And I think I'm one of the I'm one of the better. I have the experience and I'm just I'm just excited about getting back to work. You know, I'm excited about the opportunity. I'm excited about the AFL reemerging. I'm excited yeah. about the owners. 
I think they have the right mindset. I think we all on the same page as far as what we want to get out of this thing. And I'm just ready to go. I'm just looking forward to it. And I'm ready to go. Super there excited. You go. There you go. Um, just to remind you guys, we are on right now. My name's Cedric Green, C Green. This is Marshall's Law. I'm on with Coach Edwards, Coach Montre Edwards, defensive coordinator of the Rapid City Marshals. You can follow us at Shady Sports Network. You can follow the Marshals at check out marshallsfootball.com. You can go and purchase your tickets. If you use the code Shady10, you'll get 10% off. Um, so go ahead and get that code, get that discount, and go check these guys out because it's a new season, like Coach Edwards said. Um, they're sticking to the little things, you know, they're getting back to the basics and they're ready to bring the fundamentals, man. It's going to be exciting to watch them this season. So, Coach, um, before I let you go, man, um, let me just ask you real quick, what do you prefer, offense or defense? Oh, uh, defense. Defense wins championships. Defense and special teams. You know, offense okay. gets the people in the stands, but – Defense, you know, we're going to be ferocious. We're going to be agile. We're going to be hostile. We're going to be mobile. Uh, and, our, and our trademark is takeaways and turnovers. That's what we're going to do. We want the ball. We're going to play defense like it's offense. We want the ball. We want to score. And uh, we want to uh, come at you on everything you're doing. And we want to take your will to compete. And that's what we're going to be about. Hey, I'm ready for it. That sounds scary for the other teams, man, if your defense is coming out like an offense. <laughs> so, let's Absolutely. get it. I'm ready for it, man. Well, thanks for coming on, Coach Edwards. It's been a pleasure. Pleasure, um, Steve. Thank you for having me. Yes, sir. And if you want, before you go, man, let everybody know where they can follow you again, where they can find you and check out. Um, you can check me out on uh, Twitter. I'm on Twitter, uh, Montre Edwards Sr. on Twitter. Okay. There we go, man. Well, and before I let y'all go, let you um, we got something new that we're trying. So we have a trivia question. It's our weather tight trivia question of the week. What year were the Rapid City Marshals founded? So if you're a Marshals fan, you die hard. You know what year they were actually founded. So think about it. Get your question in the comments. Come back next week and find out if you're if you're right. I'm a game danger. <laughs>